We are standing at the corner of Railway Street and Alfred Street, our back to the Kent Station car park, facing Lower Glanmire Road. In the distance, above us on the hill front, we can see a billboard. It says, Open your world. There's no one around. The place is deserted. But there's a sense of something about to happen. Looking behind us into the car park, we can see the train station. It curves away from us. As we look, we become aware that it is in fact not stationary at all, but revolving slowly. The whole building is moving in a circle. It rotates completely so that there is now a little opening where once there was solid wall. From out of the opening comes a procession of immigrant cars, new to these roads, looking for adventure. Four Ford Fiestas, no drivers, but they're going fast, coloured yellow, orange, purple and green. They're driving toward the exit, but they're in the wrong lane. They drive out the entry only lane, over the speed bump, the yellow first, then the orange, then the purple, but when the green Ford Fiesta tries to drive over the bump, massive spikes shoot upward out of it, bursting the little Fiesta's tyres, leaving it stranded there. The other three drive on for a bit, unaware of what has happened to their friend, but then the green one honks its horn in distress, and they circle back in unison, doing concentric U-turns, so that they are all now in a line, facing the entrance to the car park in the middle of Albert Street. No one seems to know what to do. We hear a metal grinding sound, and turn to the left. Just behind the green fiesta, there are rows of metal sliding doors on the long, low building. They all slide open, revealing big, mean-looking Hummers, shiny black Jeeps with police badges on the bonnets. They drive out of their hiding places. The big drop down to the road and the other cars are not an obstacle. They just plough over and through everything in their path. The last one on the right, the closest one to us, makes the drop down from his hole without a problem, but when he tries to accelerate, he gets stuck under the yellow barrier. There's a horrible crunching sound as the top bar of the barrier is buried into the roof of the car. The other Hummers, who had been making their way over and around the parked cars to circle the green Fiesta, break suddenly. The Fiestas waiting on the road try to hold back laughter, but we can hear it in their engines. Across the road, From the black door in the grey stone building, diagonally across from where we're standing, there is a distinctly frustrated sigh. The door opens and an old limping T-Rex ducks out. He looks very annoyed. He reaches back into the building and pulls out a trucker hat, which he jams with some difficulty on his head. His arms are slightly too short to reach, so it takes him a few tries to get it centred, which sends the fiestas in the middle of the road into more fits of laughter. He growls, but it's a little pathetic, so he stomps over to the stuck Hummer. He mutters to the green fiesta, still impaled in the spikes and the speed bump, excuse me, and then turning, places one of his massive clawed feet on the bonnet of the stuck Hummer and with an almighty push kicks it free. The Hummer whimpers, It's free now, but looking very much the worse for wear. Now that the situation has been revolved, the other Hummers start their engine, getting ready to crush the green Fiesta. The T-Rex in the hat raises his short little arms and roars, Stop! One by one, the Hummers cut their engines. They sit there, waiting. The free Fiestas shuffle around. They seem nervous. The T-Rex in the hat points one claw up at the billboard behind us. We turn and look too. Although they don't have eyes, we get the impression that the Hummers are looking as well. Just above the billboard, there's a yellow door in a house. It opens and a person emerges. We can't quite make out who they are, but they take out a massive rocket launcher and shoot something straight into the air. The rocket goes up and up but then falls back down but then goes up and over it's writing in the sky with its stream of smoke it spells out the following if you have wings you can fly away then the rocket takes off into the atmosphere we don't think it's ever coming back the t-rex in the hat rubs his eyes he seems tired he gently picks up the green fiesta so that its roof is against its belly point bonnet pointing down 
boots sticking up straight in the air. We can see the underneath of the Fiesta from where we're standing. It's leaking oil, but it looks like it'll probably be okay. The T-Rex in the hat carries it, clunking away over to its pals and sets it down on all four tyres. Directly across the road from us, the Chrysler building shudders. Two upstairs windows blinking like huge eyes and from the boarded up silver window on the ground floor a long mechanical arm smashes out sending splinters of silver wood all over it's holding a massive chrysler logo a set of wings which it sticks onto the roof of the green fiesta and then retreats back into the building the metal of the car glows red hot and the wings fuse to its roof it takes a preliminary flap and seeming satisfied continues flapping so that it rises slowly up into the air. The other three fiestas, who have been waiting, hoping all this time, burst to life, and turning as one, they drive down Railway Street, the little green fiesta following them from the air. They're almost at the end of the street, driving away from us, but then the green fiesta circles back and zips over to the T-Rex with the hat. Its bumper buckles into a clunky pair of lips, and it plants a big smooch on the T-Rex's scaly cheek then flies away to join its friends. As they disappear out of sight, the T-Rex raises one short arm to his cheek, which doesn't quite reach, and bares his teeth. He might actually be smiling, but it's hard to tell. He stomps off back to the black door in the grey stone building, but just before he goes in, he turns to the Hummers and shoos them away, back into their holes. He crawls into the building, shuts the door, and the Hummers make their ponderous way back into their little holes, and all is quiet once more.